everybody, this is Devin Olson. Today I wanted to spend some time to talk about the new jQuery Zlayer plugin that's available on my website. Zlayer is an effect that gives illustrations or layers of an illustration sort of a Z-depth feel to it by movement of your mouse around the illustration itself. So to begin, I have an image here of some uh, statues overlooking an ocean and a wizard uh, on the foreground here. And I've taken this image and I've split it up into different layers. We have the background layer and some mountains and then finally the wizard foreground layer. Um, so by saving each one of these layers out as images um, we can then apply our Z layer effect to each one of these uh, layers. So let's go over to our HTML document. So here's our document and I've included the uh, images as actual elements and they're living inside of a container div box that has an ID of container. I've given each uh, image element a unique class, background one, two, three, as well as uh, a repeated class of Zlayer over all of them. The next thing we want to do is look at the CSS. With the container element that contains our images, we've given a position relative and an overflow hidden. We've given an overflow hidden so that the images that are bigger than the actual viewport that we've set here through height and width will be hidden outside of the viewport instead of shown when our effect is taking place. The position relative is uh, equally important because our actual layers or image elements are going to have a position absolute so they can freely move through the top and left CSS styles that our plugin applies to them. So we have the container, it's uh, position relative so the images don't fall out while they're being positioned absolute. The next thing is to look at the actual individual styles for the layers or images themselves. So we have one, two, three, and background classes that we set on the images. And we're using margins, either positive or negative, to better offset our element in the viewport. So even though the image that you want to apply a Z-layer effect has something, or the layer itself has something far off to the right, and you don't want it to spill or show the, the edge of the image, you can better offset this image, either positive or negative margins, so that when the effect starts and you've moved all the way to the right or to the left or the top or the bottom, you won't expose that cutoff point of your image by fine-tuning with these margins here. The next important option on all these images is the Z-index. Z-index with CSS basically stacks your images on top of each other. So the higher the Z-index, the, the most important or top layer, if you will, of the stack is set. So one is the background, two is the most prevalent mountain, preceding that is uh, two, which is the next one, and then finally our wizard layer, which is the foreground, is set to four, the highest. So now let's go into the actual JavaScript. So we've basically, with jQuery, we've pointed to each one of these images through the classes one, two, three, and background. Um, these are our individual layers, and we've said um, Z layer um, is applied to them. And we've given some settings to each one of our Z layers. Um, we have the mass setting, which is kind of a movement limitation. So the higher the mass, the heavier the, the image is and the less it will move. The less the mass, the more wild it gets and is freely able to move throughout your viewport. The canvas option is basically set um, to container because we want that to be the event for our movement. Uh, by default, this is set to window, so if we didn't have this option, whenever the person moved their mouse anywhere in the window, our effect would begin. Um, so we set this to canvas, our parent container, which has a fixed width and height, so that our effect is not all over the, the window as we're moving our mouse. The next option is confine. We can confine each layer to either an X or Y axis. You can't confine both because then the layer itself would not move and the effect is useless. So by confining to the Y axis, we're making sure that only our movements of left and right along the x-axis move the image and they don't go up and down on the y-axis. So you can see that each layer has a different mass setting because as you move you kind of want it to give that 3D effect of one layer moving more dramatically than the next layer to give that depth feel. So now let's look at our effect. So here's our effect. If we uh, move our mouse left or right in our viewport you can see the layers um, they move independently from one another, only on the x-axis because we can find it on the y-axis. So it really gives that, that effect that the, the wizard is, is really close to the camera or our viewport, if you will, and uh, the mountains in the back are, are moving slowly. Uh, and that's it. Thank you very much.